Hello, my name is Anna Woodhu and I'm an Associate Solicitor at Thompson Snell & Passmore in our family team. I advise clients on a broad range of family matters, including both in relation to finances and children, and particularly in relation to the financial consequences of a divorce. Both myself and Simon are members of Resolution, a professional body for family lawyers and other professionals aimed at the more amicable and cooperative resolution of family matters. Hello, I'm Simon O'Connell. I'm a Chartered Financial Planner at Evening Partners. I'm the regional head of our divorce team for the South and I'm also on Resolutions Training and Learning Committee and part of the Kent Resolution Committee. Today we are discussing pensions on divorce. Pensions are just one of the assets that it's important to consider when dealing with a divorce. There's a different way in which pensions can be dealt with. For example, and perhaps most commonly, pensions can be shared by way of a pension sharing claim. That is where one spouse may have little or no pension provision and they receive a share of the other spouse's pension to put towards their own needs in retirement. Alternatively, pensions can be offset and that is where one spouse forgoes part or all of a pension claim in lieu of receiving perhaps a greater share of other marital assets such as the family home, for example. At the end of 2023, the Nuffield Foundation prepared a report known as the Fair Shares Report. That looked at finances on divorce, how those are dealt with in practice, and made recommendations based on that review. When it came to pensions, it was found that there was a general lack of interest in dealing with pension claims, also a lack of understanding when it came to how these should be dealt with by divorcees, and also it was often the case that people took the view that the person who had been contributing to a pension should have the benefit of that going forwards rather than it being seen as a resource that can be shared. Within the study, just 11% of cases where a pension was not in payment was there any pension sharing, and of those, only 22% of those cases were pensions shared equally. A number of cases were reviewed by a pension expert, and of those, only around a third were found to be a fair outcome when it came to how the pensions have been treated. Generally, the report concluded that far greater consideration needs to be given to pensions when dealing with these on a divorce. So with that in mind, perhaps Simon, and given the outcomes of that report, you can explain a little bit about what people should be looking for when it comes to dealing with pensions. Yeah, sure. I think one of the problems is that people find pensions complex and don't really understand them because they're not generally that involved in them. Well, I think when people, for example, buy a house, they are very engaged in it. They're, they're out looking, they save up for deposit, they get a mortgage. Whereas when they take out a pension, they normally start a job, someone's given them a piece of paper, mm -hmm. um, they, they just join the scheme and they have no real involvement in it. And often they just join the default scheme anyway. So um, people don't, generally don't take, pay much attention to pensions. So when it comes to divorce, obviously they then need to be more aware of what they've got and understand it. So if I just break it down simply, that you've got a, a defined benefit, a final salary type scheme, which is mainly public sector, so NHS, teachers, um, armed forces, that type of thing, um, and um, def defined contribution, where people just pay into a, a pension, but they don't know what the outcome's gonna be until they get to retirement. Um, when it comes to pensions in payment, you've normally got two options, either an annuity, where you buy a guaranteed income in retirement, or uh, an income drawdown where you draw down um, tax-free cash sum or income as and, as and when you need it. So they're the sort of pre and post retirement type pensions and it's important to understand what type of pension you've got, um, how it works, what options you've got uh, now, um, how they can be shared um, and yeah just thinking about how you can fairly share those um, or, or offset against um, a house which we generally don't recommend because they're not uh, of equal value. So given it's important to consider pensions when dealing with a divorce, the question we're often then next asked is, well, how do I actually go about that? Firstly, when dealing with financial matters on divorce, whether that's directly or in mediation, through solicitors or through court proceedings, there's a process called financial disclosure, and that's where you exchange information in relation to your finances. That ought to include any cash equivalent values or CEVs for any pension assets that you and your spouse may have. That CEV can then be considered alongside the nature of those pensions 
as to any, whether any further documentation or advice is required. Sometimes questions need to be raised in relation to CEVs, as they may not be reflective of the true value of that pension. For example, that can be in the case of final salary schemes or public sector schemes. Once you have all of the disclosure and information that you need, sometimes it's possible to reach an agreement where um, there will be no pension sharing claim between two spouses, or you can agree a, a sharing claim on the basis of the information that's been provided. However, in some cases, due to the nature or the value of the pension assets, it might be necessary to take further expert advice or obtain an actuarial report. Actuarial reports can look at the appropriate pension sharing to, for example, equalise parties' incomes from those pensions in retirement, or alternatively, if you're considering offsetting, then they can give the appropriate figures for doing so, because having uh, a pound of household uh, equity or a pound of other marital assets is not necessarily comparable to a pound of pension income which might be received in the future. So having mentioned there that expert advice is sometimes needed, Simon, perhaps you can explain when it comes to dealing with pensions on divorce, where you might become involved in that process and the type of expertise that you can provide. Yeah, sure. Um, initially, it's just chatting to, to, um, to solicitors, mediators and, and clients about um, what type of pensions they've got, what options they have, um, you know, do they keep them, do they share them, if they've got several pensions, which ones do they share. Um, it's really just a, a, a understanding what they've got and what options they have. Um, and then often you, you need to get an instruction, so you have to ask and actually the right questions um, to get the right outcome. So it's working with solicitors and mediators to um, help understand what the letter of instruction looks like and what should go in there, what type of questions, um, and then explaining the outcome, because then what you end up with is a 30, 40 page actuarial report that a lot of clients wouldn't understand. So it's um, just explaining, so it's understanding what goes in the report, and then explaining the outcome of the report, and then if one person is going to get a share and they don't know what to do with it, it's helping with the um, pensions implementation and the credit of what to do with that pension once they receive it, because they're going to have to put it somewhere, have they got an existing pension, or do they need to take out a new one. There's obviously a lot to consider when it comes to dealing with pensions on divorce. They're not necessarily the most straightforward thing, can be quite complex at times. I was wondering if you could perhaps leave us with your top tip when it comes to dealing with pensions. Yeah, sure. I think it's taking advice early. Don't leave it too late. Um, understand what your options are mm -hmm. and don't ignore the pensions. And so if you've got any questions following the discussion we've had today, if you'd like to speak to us about dealing with divorce, financial consequences or pensions in particular, please don't hesitate to contact either one of us. Our details will be at the end of this video and otherwise thank you ever so much for listening.